So we're at the Queen Caroline case, which is part of the Georgian Delights exhibition. And what we've got, and it's reproduced in the gallery guide for the exhibition as well, is this quite interesting artifact, which is called the Cradle Hymn. So it purports to be a hymn, and the characters in the caricature uh, include some of the leading Tory ministers of the day. So Lord Sidmouth, who was the reactionary Home Secretary, and Lord Castlereagh, who was the Foreign Secretary. And there's this infant George being sort of lullabied by them, and it's a satire on the royal divorce, the attempt to divorce by the King of Queen Caroline. So, I mean, what are your impressions of this, Judith? How does it fit in with this sort of period, of this idea that the Georgians were all very polite and genteel? Well, it's interesting because it's using both the notion of him and uh, the, uh, it evokes the, the lullaby, um, which are two central Georgian musical practices that we would think about as part of genteel domestic life and as, as part of respectable music making. Um, but it does it in the form of a broadside and a caricature. So the broadside ballad is something um, where you put new words to an old tune. And it's possible, it doesn't say what tune you were meant to sing this to, but it's laid out as a hymn. Yes. And potentially it is referring to a musical model that's sitting behind it, that you could sing these satirical words. And these kinds of things circulated all the time. There's tons of this sort of material from this period. And it's really interesting to think about when we watch costume drama, we think of music as something that's done in the drawing room and it's done as a polite and genteel practice, and it was, but it was also a way of uh, subverting all kinds of social norms and satire is one way that it does this. There's tons of satirical songs that are composed with notated music. So composers of uh, particularly London theatre composers like Charles Dibden or William Shield or uh, William Reeve. Uh, there's just lots of funny songs satirizing pretty much any element of Georgian life you would like to satirize. There's a song that's making fun of it. Uh, and uh, it's interesting that, for example, Jane Austen's music collection has a ton of these songs. And it's really interesting to think how as a satirical yeah. writer, yeah. Her, um, uh, her sensibility is affected by this culture of satirical song. Mm. So that's one thing that, that this makes me think about is um, this whole level of just savage mockery mm -hmm. um, and um, that playful aspect of Georgian culture that has a real musical dimension and that you see um, evoked not by musical notation, but by there are certain signifiers here of the lullaby, the layout of the hymn and stanzas, the way that it looks like a broadside ballad that you would sing to a tune. Those kinds of things make me um, make me think of this this side of Georgian music making that we don't pay as much attention to perhaps uh, today. The other thing um, that we can think about while we're on that that topic of uh, uh, music as, let's say, um, supporting various kinds of social norms or subverting it. I'm looking up at the top here at the, uh, at the national anthem, God Save the King, in its 18th, uh, early 19th century version um, up here. Um, it's a nice juxtaposition yes. with music used to satirize established monarchy. But I also think about all the different kinds of inappropriate music <laughs> that people had. <laughs> so um, while the broadside ballad we might think of as something that's you know very typical, let's say, of taverns and of pub of the public sphere more generally, lots of it finds its way into private mm -hmm. collections and private homes. Um, but uh, there is also a lot of public music in the opera houses and other places like this, places that, you know, George IV was a huge frequenter of the, of the opera. And uh, the English opera in particular uh, and the, um, the type of opera that you would hear at Drury, the Drury Lane Theatre as opposed to the, the, the King's Theatre at the Haymarket, um, you know, tales of elopement, love, scandal, um, illegitimate children, all kinds of stuff. And uh, these kind of things make it into the home as well. There's a lot of um, ways of using music to occupy a fantasy world that's very different from yeah. the, the world that you might be confined to as a member of 
uh, the gentry class, for example, um, that you can use music as a, as a way to critique your own culture, to subvert it in various ways, to play, to, have, to, um, to occupy a fantasy world. That's, that's all um, things that you can do with music um, that, let's say, if we, if we take this as, as something that's much more a, a kind of an as established mm. view on social hierarchies and social systems. We can also think of these kinds of things and the sorts of things that are happening in the opera house as providing other opportunities yeah, and other kinds of delights. Parallels for one another, mm -hmm. that's great. There's much more in that case, so we hope the visitors will come and explore and look and find and tease out those connections themselves.